Hey everybody, this is Darren. I will drive GT2 and uh, I'm gonna take a minute to do a video on my transmission cooler install or upgrade. Um, a lot of people asking me about uh, how I did it and uh, it, well, the job was done. And so I'm gonna go circle back around, go back in and show everybody what I did, what I could have done better and I'm actually gonna do it while I video this and uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. But first, let's talk about the parts you're gonna need. Number one, numero uno, you're gonna need this adapter plate. Um, I got mine from a, a guy named uh, Quick Nick, but he got it from David Chung over at L3, uh, L3, I'm sorry, um, Lap3. So this is the adapter you're gonna need when you pull off your old transmission uh, cooler, and you're gonna need that adapter first. So go to lap3.com or do a Google search, you'll find them on his website. They screw in from the back, and then there's even neat little arrows that tell you the direction of the fluid in and out. The next thing, is what I used is the uh, derail um, transmission cooler with fans built in and then I went and used a derail external transmission filter great piece of kit right here um, I'll put all the part numbers in the description below so this is the old transmission cooler that comes from Kia uh, it's only got uh, six fins uh, it's only about an inch thick or less not very efficient it works okay but if you're in warm climate like me north carolina and you race a lot definitely want to invest in a uh, extra, uh additional transmission cooler uh, upgraded one so uh didn't really have a lot of issues there's nothing uh <laughs> everything's custom all right there's there's no just you bolt on brackets and you're done and people ask well, why didn't you just buy the the bms one well, because I did this way before BMS came out with theirs, and uh, theirs is actually pretty good. I understand they have a really nice uh, bracket system that bolts right in, but for mine, I had to do some custom fabrication, meaning uh, it's just some eighth inch aluminum. I did some custom bending, used existing bolts, no big deal. Same here for the cooler. This um, bracket was over here from the old shroud. I just used another piece of aluminum with the hardware that this came with, bolted it on. Um, everything works really good and a huge difference in transmission temps while I'm racing and daily driving So why am I circling back to make some improvements one? Uh, this thing's a little crooked. Uh, I was in a rush when I put it in because the very next morning I had an appointment uh, At a transmission shop. They were going to let me use a lift and they did uh, to drain my uh, Transmission fluid, so I was doing a flush So it's like nine o'clock at night I was out here uh, scrambling to get everything buttoned back up so I could take the car out there in the morning. Didn't want to miss that appointment. It was a free lift. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a hair crooked. Super easy to fix. I'll probably just slot uh, these holes and go ahead and adjust this. Uh, same thing here. It's not exactly uh, straight. It's a little tilted, but super easy fix, guys. The other improvement I'm going to do is when I pull these brackets off, um, I'm going to go ahead and sandblast them. I'm going to powder coat these black. Um, I got a little powder coat gun in the shop, so I'll get that so it's looking good. And the third are these bends. I didn't necessarily like the way uh, these these bent. It came with some nice uh, NTP fittings. They're barbed. But after the fact, when I buttoned all this thing up, um, I, I didn't quite like it. I don't like that bend because when this hose gets really warm, it wants to collapse and it's going to restrict flow. So what I did... Is I just got on OldSummit.com and I either got uh, got some Vapor Guard uh, from Earl's and Vibrant. These are two really good products. I got a 45 and some 90s, both male and female. So what am I going to do with those? I'm going to replace these straights, probably with the 45 right here to reduce um, this bend, and then I'll probably definitely do a 90 degree here. And that'll shorten this hose, and it'll keep it from uh, wanting to pinch like it is right now. And then once all that's done, I'm going to take these spacers out. The reason I put these spacers is I needed to drop this thing down because the higher it went, the tighter that curve got. And then it started interfering with the shroud. So I'm going to uh, take these spacers out. That'll lift this thing up a little higher, give it more airflow. And uh, that's my project today. So, uh, so uh, first thing I decided to do is take out these, uh, take out these spacers, and go ahead and just get this thing uh, raised up where it should be, so I can probably prop, uh, properly cut and measure, uh, you know, the hoses where they're gonna end up at. So what I did is, uh, see, I got this 90 in. I think it's gonna be way better than that straight one. If you look at this angle, 
That is so much better than that big loop it had done before. So uh, I went ahead and made a marking pencil. And we'll use proper cutters. Get that half installed. Then I'll move over here and do this side. Once I'm good with the plumbing, I'll take the brackets back out, get them sandblasted, powder coated, get everything straightened up and even and level, and then I'll bolt her all back in. Okay, so I got the first one done. Uh, really pleased with the way that came out. Much better of a curve. Uh, I'm not only using less hose, but there's almost no chance of this getting pinched. Um, so what I used here, hold on, the wind's blowing. It's an Earl's. This is, uh, yep, the 90 degree hose in, 3 8 barb to dash 6. That's what this guy is. So if you're going to do this mod, I'd recommend getting one of these and not using the straight tip that they give you uh, with the dash 6 to 3 8 barb and getting a 90 degree. Much cleaner install. So if you're going to do this, that's what I would recommend. I'm going to move over to this side and put that uh, 45 on and see how... How much I can get rid of that curve right there all right so we're back at it changed my mind that's our prerogative right I was gonna use a 45 here but um, I got to look in I think a 90 was a better choice um, I like that curve I got way more room now here and because I got this extra room by using the uh, dash 6 2 or 3 8 barb instead of uh, lowering this side by, by slotting that hole and lowering this, I'm actually going to slot the bottom of this and raise this side up so that levels this thing. And then I'll slot this right here so this whole thing will slide back a hair and it'll be nice and pretty. So what I'm going to do now, everything's plumbed, I'm good, I'm happy. I'm going to take these brackets off, uh, go get them sandblasted, I'll powder coat them. I might film some of that, throw everything back in and I'll be, uh, I'll be done this project. Okay, so I've got my two brackets. About to do the powder coating, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to uh, unravel the mystery of powder coating because a lot of guys, um, they just think it's beyond their capability. And I, I guys will tell you it's really not. Um, so I sandblasted my two uh, brackets here, just kind of deberm and degrease them. Um, you don't have to sandblast parts before you uh, powder coat them. They just won't be as, uh, as dull. Uh, I'm going to be using a flat black. But hey, man, to powder coat, super simple. You just need an air source. Could be a little pancake. Uh, compressor or a big one doesn't matter. Um, I've got a fairly high-end gun here. This is a red line But uh, I just got off the eastwood.com website eastwood and I was looking at their guns. They're like $119 so you know for 120 bucks you can get yourself a powder coat gun and all you need after that is a, a, a way to cure it and so what I do is use this is a toaster oven and I use this to temper knife blades so um, I also use it to hang things in when I do powder coating on small parts. So guys, just a, a toaster oven dedicated to um, curing the, the powder on a powder coat gun. And uh, you just need a gun. And then I get my powder from Prismatic Powders. Prismatic. I get a flat black. I've got cherry red. It's $12 a pound. One pound will last you months. So it literally costs pennies. And I, when I'm being serious when I say pennies to powder coat small parts. And uh, you can even make money. You can do all your bolt heads, do small parts for friends. You're only limited to the size of your oven. So I'm going to go ahead and powder coat these black. I'll get them in the oven, bake them, and it only takes about 12 minutes. Get the parts in, and they're still in a powder state right now. Not necessarily a powder coat uh, tutorial, but I just want to show you guys how really easy it is with just a toaster oven and a hundred twenty dollar gun. Another twelve bucks for a pound of powder. You can powder coat your own stuff. Super simple. Um, so once that powder turns into a, a liquid, it, it's what they call a flash. It only takes twelve minutes, and it flashes in about four or five minutes at four hundred degrees. Once it flashes, leave it in there for another 12 minutes, and you've just got baked enamel parts. So really simple, guys. 
All right, so two brackets are done. I'm just letting them cool off right now. Probably 100 or so degrees. A little bit too hot to touch, but it only takes a few for it to cool off. But they come out pretty good for DIY garage job and for something that no one will ever see because of the front clips always going to be on there. But it makes me happy. I know these are uh, much better than what I had. That transmission cooler will be um, straight. won't be crooked. It'll be even. And when I do pull the clip off, I'll have some decent, decent brackets I can show off. Super simple. All right, this is it. I'm gonna chalk this up as a, as a success, a completed project. So just to recap on everything, some of the things I did to improve. Um, I had some spacers here because I didn't like the curves of the hoses. So I got these spacers out. Instead of using the straight AN6 to barbs, I used a 90 here and a 90 here, which significantly reduced the amount of uh, tubes or uh, 3 8 transmission line I needed. Um, so I tightened that up. Um, I slotted my brackets, so I got this thing uh, straight and level, and I powder coated them. Um, so if you got any questions, just hit me up in the comments. Uh, if you got any suggestions, let me know. If you do one and video it, please send me the link. I'd love to see it. Um, again, it's a total custom fab job. I wish I could tell you exactly how to bend stuff, and uh, it just you just gotta wing it, guys. Wing it and uh, make the best of it. Don't be intimidated. It's not a hard job. Uh, yep. So I think we're good. Thanks for watching.